Hi everybody, um, this is going to be on 11.7 strategy for testing series. We're not going to learn any new techniques in this section. Okay, the point of this section is to kind of look at all the tests together and um, practice learning when to use each test. Because of course, when you look at each test on its own, it's a lot different than looking at a series and figuring out which test to use. So for this, um, as you watch this video, um, this might be a good time to hit pause, but I want you to download and print the handout that I've given on this section, okay? There is a handout that lists all of the tests in kind of a flow chart. So let me just write that down here. Please see handout. But what I want to do is I want to give a flow chart for how this works, okay? The first thing you do when you have a series, so remember, when you have a series, it looks like this. First thing you wanna do is to check the strong divergence test, okay? Check the strong divergence test. So if you check the strong divergence test, this may tell you that your sequence diverges, okay? But if your limit goes to zero, it tells you nothing, and then you move on. You try something different. So then at this point, what I think is a good idea to do is to ask yourself if it's telescoping or geometric. If it's one of those two things, then we know not only if it converges or diverges, but if it converges, we know what it converges to. So let me just say, it either converges, and not only that, but to a number. In other words, you can tell me what number it converges to, or it diverges, right? Those are the only two options if it's one of those two. Now, let's say it's neither of those things. At this point, it's either a positive series or not, okay? So let me just put it this way. If it's a positive series, then we have a lot of possibilities of what we can do. We have, uh, maybe it's a P series. Maybe we can use one of the two comparison tests, LCT or CT. Maybe we can use the integral test. And yeah, so, so basically we've got those. And then we've also got the ratio test or the root test, okay? So all of these tests, every single one of them, tells you whether the series converges or not. And in particular, if they're positive series, then they are going to absolutely converge. Or I'll just say absolutely converge or it's going to diverge. Okay. Now what happens if there are negative um, terms in your series? 
I actually suggest um, a strategy, which is we built into this the theorem that says that if your series has negative terms, why not look at the absolute value instead? So let me write this in steps. Step one will be instead to look at the absolute value of a n instead. Let me write this as a series. Look at the absolute value of a n instead. So because of that, you're looking at a positive series. You can use any of these tests when you look at the absolute value. Now, here's the thing about these tests, okay? The theorem says that if the absolute value of a series converges, then so does the original. In other words, these will give you absolute convergence. So I will say these guys give you absolute convergence, or if they diverge with the test, you still have to check the original series. Okay, so I will say, um, or go to step two instead. So step two I will say if um, we need to check the original an. for conditional convergence. And I can say use AST, right? At this point, you'll have exhausted every possibility except the alternating series test. Okay. Now, what about if you look at the absolute value and you get ratio or root test? These tests are special because they will give you that it either absolutely converges or it diverges, okay? No matter what, even if you looked at absolute values, those tests are special. So the idea, guys, is that if you've already checked the absolute value and it diverges, that's why you have to check um, two because it still might converge conditionally, right? You have to check, um, use the alternating series test here. As far as how you decide when to use what test, that's all written on your handout, okay? I don't want to write the conditions for every single test here. But the handout has all that information. So what I want to do um, with the remainder of this uh, video is I want to write down a couple of series that I found in the book. And I want us to decide what test to use. I'm not going to run through the whole test, but I will get it started so that you see um, what I would do if I were solving this problem. So, what technique should we use to um, study the series? So let me um, start by writing down a couple of series. Um, first one. Let's look at this series, okay? Now, because this is an alternating series, I think the easiest way to do this problem would be using the AST, right? Use AST. I already know that this is going to converge using AST just because of the nature of the series. Um, I know that th these terms are going to go to zero, and I know that they're decreasing, but there is some work to be done there to actually show those two things, okay? But um, I can already tell this is going to converge. Now, is there another way to do this? Actually, no, because if you were to look at the positive terms here, 
you get n squared minus 1 over n cubed plus 1. And this does, if you look at just the highest powers, it looks like 1 over n, which actually diverges. And so this guy actually does converge conditionally, okay, because the absolute value is going to diverge. So I'm sort of skipping time and jumping straight to AST because I know I can already look at it and tell what's going to happen, okay? Let's look at um, another problem. How about this one? So what do we know about this series? Well, it's a positive series, so I know I can use all the positive tests. And this has polynomial on top and on bottom, so the best strategy here is to use um, the limit comparison test. So I'm just going to say use LCT, and what are we going to use? What series are we going to use? What am I going to call Bn? Um, take the largest power on top. So the dominating term on top and the dominating term on the bottom. In other words, this is just n squared over n cubed, which is 1 over n. So again, I'm getting you started. I would recommend going through all these problems one at a time anyway, just so you can uh, understand where to go from there. Okay, but... That's what I would do for this problem. Let's try another one. How about the sum n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n cosine of 1 over n squared. Now, when I look at this, I immediately think, okay, cosine um, is a fishy thing. Um, usually, when we start off with this, a good thing to do would be to use, start off with the strong divergence test and notice something. If you take the limit as n goes to infinity of cosine of 1 over n squared, as n goes to infinity, 1 over n squared goes to 0. So cosine of that actually goes to 1, which is not 0. So it diverges. You notice I worked that one all the way out just because it was so quick. Okay, But um, most of these, I'm just going to be giving you a strategy to use. I'm not going to work out the whole problem. Okay. All right, um, let me do another one. Why not? How about so n equals one to infinity e to the one over n over n squared. Now, um, what pops out at me is when I look at this thing, um, I immediately could tell that I know how to take the integral of this, okay? e to the 1 over n over n squared. Um, if you think about it, this integral is going to be easy because you could just let u equal 1 over x and then du will be negative 1 over x squared dx. So as soon as you notice it's something you can integrate, we know that the integral test is going to work. So I'm going to say use the integral test. Okay. Another promising one here that might work is maybe uh, the ratio test will work, um, just because we have a combination of polynomials and exponents. But I would say the integral test would be the easiest one to use here. Okay, um, let's try another one. How about 
I think we're on number five, right? Yes, number five. How about this one? Now, we're not gonna think about this one very much. We see a factorial in this problem. As soon as you see a factorial, I would always use the ratio test, okay? The ratio test is always nice because it allows all the factorials to cancel out. Okay. Let me do one more. How about this one? Now for this one, it's obvious as well. You're going to use the root test. Why? Because the whole thing is something to the nth power. As soon as you have something to the nth power, we know the root test is gonna be nice. And just to show you again how to do the root test, this one's so easy that we may as well do it. Um, if we take the nth root of this, the n just goes away. And so we're just gonna end up doing the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of two minus one. Okay. What is the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of two minus one? Well, um, the trick is to realize that this is really two to the one over n. Right? This is 2 to the 1 over n. So if you send n to infinity, that means this goes to 2 to the 0. In other words, it's just 1 minus 1, which is 0, which is less than 1. Okay? So what does that mean? If you're, um, if you're less than 1, remember that means that it converges, right? So this means it is absolutely convergent. Okay? So, um, yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a sort of a quick rundown of how you can decide which method to use. This takes a lot of practice, and you've got to make sure that you do all the other sections before you attempt 11.7. But 11.7 is in many ways the most important section of the whole chapter because it summarizes the first six sections and it's really how you learn how to decide which one to use, which test to use. All right, guys, um, thank you very much for watching and hope you have a good day.